hey, still there. So you're looking to increase the reproducibility of your qPCR experiments now. Well, you're in the right place. I've got six tips to get you started. The first step to reproducibility. Follow the best practice guidelines for minimizing contamination. Like, for instance, working in a qPCR dedicated area. Do you need a refresher on these best practices? Go check out our lab note episode on minimizing contamination in real-time PCR. Tip number two, make sure that your pipettes are calibrated. And don't let your lab mates borrow them for non-QPCR applications, like cleaning their ears or their nose. Tip number three, use a node template control to verify the absence of contaminants. And number four, always prepare enough master mix to run all your reactions. I usually try to prepare at least 10% extra. Making a new batch of master mix after you set up half of your reactions is one of the best ways to introduce variability. Tip number five, when making technical replicates, add the template to the master mix, not to the individual reactions. That way you'll ensure that all the reactions see the same amount of template. And finally, avoid pipetting less than five microliters. We know there are special pipettes and that you've mastered the art of uh, pipetting, but still, even for a ninja like you, it is very difficult to pipette small volumes accurately. Follow these simple tips and you should be on the road to more reproducible qPCR data. That's it. You can now resume watching old X-Files episodes, but if you need more tips and tricks for real-time PCR, check out our Lab Notes episodes and subscribe to our BiRad Life Science YouTube channel. If you yourself have any tips and tricks that you want to share or ideas for future topics, please let us know in the comments section in YouTube. See you next time.